All right, well, we are. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good. That's, that's a good crowd. It's a really good crowd. Um, okay, well, you guys are going to love our next guest. Our next guest is the Nevada State um, Commission Minority Affairs. It works with the. Sorry, our next guest is uh, part of the Nevada State Commission of Minority Affairs. He's also the. Uh, one of the founders of the first Pacific Islander fraternity, and he's had a bunch of involvement with a bunch of cool White House initiatives. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to talk about it today. But one of the main things that you've done, and this is how I always introduce you to my friends, is like you spend a lot of time lobbying the FDA for cancer treatments. And this is an amazing person who's made some really good headway. And I want to talk about that too. And then, of course, you were in Joe Biden, uh, Vice President. You were in the um, motorcade, right? You had, I guess, lines of motorcycles just surrounding your cool body and, and, and like, driving the staff yeah <laughs> very cool um and then uh, he brought kona ice to las vegas and also you created a very cool community partnership centric model about the way that grew so a bunch of stuff to get through but um first off i want to let everyone know so the way me and evan met was he bought me at a dating auction <laughs> so uh this is not the first time we've hung out and chatted um, but uh, in all fairness, it was also Tony Shea and other, <laughs> other, other people were involved, so it wasn't as romantic as you just envisioned, so don't be dirty. Um, okay, but let's talk about, let's talk about the fun stuff first. Just what's the motorcade like? And then we'll get serious. But like, do you feel like a million bucks or Iron Man or just like the president? What was it like? Well, it was strange. So I got this call and uh, it was from a congressional office and they said, okay, is this Evan Louie? I said, yes, it is. And they said, well, we're calling to see if you want to drive, uh, pick up Joe, Vice President Biden at the airport and drive in his motorcade. And I said, Wait, for real? <laughs> like, they said, right, right. And then they also asked, uh, do you have three or four friends that want to come with you? So I got to submit a list of three friends. Um, then we drove in his motorcade. He gave me this coin. It's a vice presidential coin. Um, interesting thing is actually, wow. so last time you were here, um, we talked too, is uh, he was, when he came and visited last time, he was actually supposed to speak at my warehouse. And we moved it to the Henderson Convention Center. Okay. So that was the original. Because you were plan. jumping it around, right? That's all yeah, part we're of that moving it. It was announced kind of that like... they'd be speaking at, at the Kona Ice Warehouse, but then we had to shift it to locations due to capacity limits. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, and I ended up going to the event. It looked like it was hugely successful. The whole room was full. I'd never seen so many people who chant on cue. It was great. Yeah. I loved it. <laughs> um, okay, so that was very cool. I saw, I saw that and I just thought, I can't believe he's in there. That's Because that held up me and all the regular people for a while. Because you guys <laughs> had to get wherever you're going instantly. So that's fine. Um, yeah, but let's talk about uh, all this lobbying you've done, the FDA for cancer. Like what made you, what motivated you to do this and what kind of success have you had? Um, well, part of the drive of even uh, Kona Ice as a business, too, is that, um, I'll tell you a sad story, Will. In 2007, I married the woman of my dreams, uh, my wife, and uh, unfortunately, four months after marriage, she was diagnosed with brain cancer. Uh, she was seven and a half months pregnant with my daughter, and uh, she was, my daughter was born in preemie. So I spent two years living in hospitals, taking care of a sick wife and raising a newborn baby um, until she passed away. And when she passed away in 2008, you know, I took my daughter and I said, kind of, Create this concept of the art of uh, transference or pain transfers. It took that pain and emotion and and drew it to passion uh, to make a difference. So I kind of helped create a coalition of brain cancer uh, nonprofits across the country. Uh, created an advisory board of some of the world's top neurosurgeons and neuroscientists. Then lobbied the FDA uh, for what is now the standardized form of brain cancer treatment, which is Avastin. It's, a, it's called the angiogenesis so cool. inhibitor. Right. Okay, so we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are kind of driven by passion too. I know this is an extreme case in your sense, but what can you give them as advice to help them kind of channel that passion into like really useful change the way you did? Um, well, I'll tell you a little bit how we formed our, um, our partnership model, and I call it a horizontal and vertical community integration platform. And so what we did is, uh, yeah, it's like sort of in some vertical. ways. <laughs> but but uh, we reached out to then, yeah. starting partnerships with the school district, the schools, the sports leagues, nonprofits, and then we started partnering with uh, the business community, the chambers, entrepreneurial networks, to city, county, state. Uh, now we're formed over 600 partnerships. So we're partnering yeah, with the colleges, great, yeah. we do Zappos uh, fundraising. And then we also wanted to take a, a really different approach. And so what we did is try to uh, promote high level education. So we did start bringing like NASCAR drivers to the schools to promote. Uh, and we actually brought a NASCAR driver, paired oh, up cool. with a, um, another person to talk about clean water in third world countries. 
and we visited schools, like there's 1,400 kids in schools, and NASCAR driver would talk about, actually focus on STEM, so they'd talk about the engineering mathematics right. side of STEM, and uh, just really interesting experience. And we've been just bringing anything from first ladies of countries in partnership with a an or global organization to the Dalai Lama's head abbot who actually spoke at the Learning Village. I gotcha. So for an entrepreneur, you would say really just like reach out to different people in the community and get them involved in what you care about? Uh, well, kind of like get them? A lot of it too is uh, our give back. So we've, we've actually give back 20% of our top line revenue back to school sports leagues and nonprofits oh, gotcha. as a brand. So we're fundraising right. and partnerships. So that's how we formed a lot of these partnerships. Um, and also co-sponsoring a lot of different events within the city. Um, but recently, the Las Vegas Vision Convention Authority chose us as one of three businesses to represent the city of Las Vegas for uh, their Tourism Matters campaign. Oh, their global great. Campaign for the, yeah, so it's Yeah, crazy. congratulations. <laughs> Should we see it around? Okay, so um, when it came to the Kona Ice um, Community Partnership-Centric Model, is that what you were just describing? Is that the same thing yeah, as vertical, it, well, horizontal? Yeah, so what we did is literally looked at what are the, all the aspects of a community. There's civic organizations, from education to school district, you know, there's different, the business community, and really just started partnering up with more philanthropic focus, like I said, education. So a lot of things that are, whether it's a summit or a fundraiser, we get our partners like UNLV to co-sponsor events or host events. Um, a lot of our business, even Zappos actually turns around and, and co-sponsors some of our community-based events as well. Oh, so cool. that's, um, and to this date, in the past two years, we've formed, like I said, uh, over 600 partnerships to date. Okay. Um, so, especially for an entrepreneur, what can they learn from your involvement with the White House? Like, are there initiatives that people should know about, or is there a way to work with the White House the same way you did for other people to get things done? Well, actually, just recently we hosted the White House Advisory here, uh, the White House Initiatives on Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, they were hosted at UNLV. So, um, to get involved, actually, there's uh, kind of an economic team that calls that they have, um, and I can forward that to you, or they can forward to this group here. Yeah. Um, you know, and just participate in, in federal initiatives that may impact your businesses. So, um, and on state side, state capacity, I also chair economic development. So we have to track a lot of uh, things that happen on state. And a lot of the entrepreneurial issues right now we hear is access to capital is one of the key issues for small businesses. So, sure. Yeah, you do a lot of things. Um, <laughs> okay, so wearing a lot of hats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll I guess we'll talk about the best ways to get in touch with you. But I mean, is that something? Uh, is that a public link that you're you're going to share, or Which is that one? like the one day White House Yeah. Yes. Okay. So maybe you could you guys could tweet at him. Do you have a Twitter? Is that a good place? Yeah. Or I can email link. Okay. Do you want your email out there? Yeah. yeah okay. That's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Give, <laughs> give him your email then. So we it's, can get. Uh, uh, it's personal. It's uh, Evan at gmail .com. So that's our. Uh, it's E V A N L O U I E at gmail .com. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, so, well, you got a bunch of stuff to talk about. I mean, I guess let's, so about this um, Pacific Islanders fraternity, like, do you want to give us that story okay. real quick? Give us so in 1998, uh, we founded the first Pacific Islander fraternity in the Greek system uh, out of San Francisco. And the interesting thing is we promote learning about culture. So learning about the Melanesian, Micronesian, and Polynesian uh, culture, as well as building civic leadership. So a lot of it's not like a typical fraternity where you're doing hazing. Uh, we actually want to promote leadership development. So Stemming from our fraternity since 1998, uh, a lot of the national leaders of the Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander community are actually f formed from our fraternity. So uh, we do a lot of initiatives. One of the things we're focusing on is the 2020 census that's coming up. Oh, cool. Um, so that, that Democratic rally that you had me go to, did she, <laughs> did she win? Was that good? Oh, no. Well, it's still midterm. Oh, it's still happening. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. November. Um, do you want to oh. plug it? So you're supporting her. Uh, well, yeah. So a friend of mine, Aaron Bilbray, is running for Congress, Congressional District 3. Uh, oh, yeah? And uh, it was her event. She was, uh, she was the one that brought uh, Vice President Biden to speak on her behalf. And uh, she's a good friend of mine and helped her out with, with her campaign. So I'm um, yeah. here to support her, too. I'm registered here now. All right. Yeah. Good job. Nice. Register. Thanks, vote. guys. Yeah. <laughs> Make a difference. It's going. <laughs> it does. Okay. Well, okay. So we're almost out of time. But let's like, what's a, what's a big overall takeaway? So you've just been through some pretty uh, amazing experiences throughout your life. But like, What's your big takeaway, I guess, from your life that you could kind of share with us? Like, what are the kind of things that drive you day to day that might be helpful? Any big, big, like, broad, like, things to help? Oh, okay, so, <laughs> uh, you know. I'm through all my of, other questions, guys. Give me, this is a good one. You know, uh, there's a lot of talk about changing the world or making an impact and making a difference. And, you know, I wholeheartedly believe it. You know, I've uh, actually just the other month in August, I was at a global summit in uh, Seoul, Korea, 
meeting with presidents and prime ministers and kings and queens of uh, countries all over the world. Wow. And, um, you know, creating partnerships or relationships with not just the city, county, state, nationally and globally is that, you know, you can meet with a world leader and talk about anything from, you know, peace initiatives to economic development to um, climate change, whatever it may be. And uh, it just makes such a huge impact participating in global humanitarianism. Yeah. So I think, I guess uh, it's true because I get that aura like I can't, but I really should just try to reach out to people who are in power and the government and see if they'll listen. It's really, you know, getting out there and making that difference, Dylan. You know that. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for coming out. We I appreciate it. Dylan. Give him a round of applause. Thank, Thank you, you Evan Louie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys, I hope you guys have your drinks ready. Wait, you can't go yet. Okay. We've got a song for you. <laughs> We've been drinking beers for hours just for this moment. Like, right. you, cannot, you cannot run now. Um, yeah, I guess hit it, but he's probably working on it, so... Hey. <laughs> to our ups and downs, we gather around and sing a drinking song. Oh, you don't have a drink. I know, I don't have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Place where we belong. Cheers. Cheers.